Nuclear Notes, page 8. Artificial transmutations. So big key here, if it's artificial, that means that you need to have a bombarding particle. So in essence, you need to have two or more reactants. Okay? Every natural transmutation, only one reactant. As I mentioned before, the two major types of artificial you need to be most familiar with, fission and fusion. So notice we have a Venn diagram, so that means there are unique characteristics to each versus they have some things in common. Okay, so number one, they're artificial because they are a forced process. Number two, most importantly, fission and fusion tie into the idea of Einstein's most famous equation, E equals MC squared. And in this point, that fission and fusion, these are the most powerful reactions. And the reason that they are the most powerful reactions is that during these nuclear processes, they directly change some of their nuclear mass into energy. So fission and fusion both release a, a tremendous amount of energy. So get this memorized that they change or convert mass into energy. Fission, specifically. This is the result of heavy or big nuclei breaking apart. So it is going from big to small, okay? So heavy, big nuclei breaking apart, a big nucleus into a smaller nucleus. Um, best examples of, of fission process would be using uranium, Oops, my spelling here. I guess I'm not going to do it. Or plutonium would be the best examples. And if you look, go find them on the PT, you're going to see that they have some of the largest masses. And this is the process used in the atomic bomb, in modern nuclear weapons, and in nuclear power plants. The pros to using, especially when we're talking about, you know, power plants, the pros is that it's cost effective. Meaning that compared to, you know, using wind turbines, using solar panels, burning fossil fuels, you pr it produces the most energy. So that is a good thing. The con, oh, and I want to say, well, we'll come back to that. And, but the con is, is what do you do with the radioactive waste? I mean, it takes beyond thousands of years for that radioactive waste to become less hazardous. So it's too long to decay into stable matter. In the United States, they started storing some of the radioactive waste in Yucca Mountain. to keep it out of regular um, landfill sites. On the other hand, fusion, okay, this is when you start with small 
nuclei. And the small nuclei, they unite. So small nuclei unite. So here, you start off with small, and you end up with a larger structure. Best examples of elements participating in this, hydrogen and helium, your two smallest elements. Um, this process here on Earth is best known. This is the process used in the hydrogen bomb um, after World War II. Um, only one bomb was actually detonated in the history of, of people, and that was Bikini Island in the Pacific. Scientists saw the devastation, and they petitioned the world not to build these. So if you ever watch SpongeBob, Bikini Island, and some of the weird things that happened there, it's in reference to the history of dropping the hydrogen bomb. This process is also... It, this is how the stars, like the sun, make elements. Okay, So the fusion process, stars like our sun make elements. Um, a young star is mostly hydrogen and helium. A star that's almost at the end, of the end of its life. So a very old star has very little hydrogen and helium, and you see more iron. So a star that is near its death at the end of its life cycle is because it's starting to run out of its fuel, hydrogen and helium, and seeing more and more iron. So fusion, they believe, is the process to make elements 1 through 26. So elements, so we're going to put 1 through 26 up here. Now, the pro to the fusion process is it is the most cost effective. It releases the most energy. More energy than even the fission process, okay? And, but the major con here is that there is no way to control this reaction on Earth. So no way to control on Earth at this point. The technology is not there. This requires, I'm going to put extreme temperature and pressure and magnetic fields to control. And we don't have this, um, we don't have the technology. And when I say extreme temperatures, we're talking about around 10 to the 6 kelvins. So around a million kelvins in temperature. Now, one, I'm going to change my color here, okay? One of a very significant pro to either fission and fusion, I mean cost effective fission produces uh, more energy, I should replace this word most with more energy than any of our other fuel producing, energy producing means. Fission, or fusion, sorry, does release the most, but one wonderful thing about both of these process, they, uh, they don't cause air or water pollution like our other traditional means of producing energy. 